Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the question, am I once saved, always saved? In other words, when I am saved once by Jesus Christ, is there any possibility of me falling back into sin? Now, this is a reasonable question. I'd like to take this time to thank one of our viewers who actually sent in this question. It states, after I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, why do I have to go through a probationary period? And then he quoted John chapter 5 verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life now the question is asked again after i accept jesus christ as my personal savior truly with my heart is there any possibility of me falling back into condemnation and lost my salvation that is what we're going to answer in this presentation Now to answer that question, firstly I want to begin with Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. It says, Not everyone who said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So here he tells me that there are people who profess to be Christ followers. They claim to be following the Jesus of the Bible, yet one day the Lord will say unto them, I never knew you. The Bible tells us that not everyone who say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, if that is true, how do we distinguish those people who are lying and those people who are truly believers in Christ? Now we may answer it in a long way, but the short answer is through a judgment process. Through the judgment process, God will distinguish his people and then those who are not part of the kingdom of God, by default, they will be under the kingdom of the devil. So once you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, your name goes into the book of life. And after your name goes into the book of life, it has to remain there. The Bible clearly tells us that some people whose names have entered into the book of life, their names will be blotted out. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, it says, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So it says, those who overcome, their names will not be blotted out of the book of life, which means those who never overcome, what about them? Their names will be blotted out. The negative is also true in this statement. After you accept Jesus, your name is transferred into the book of life, but you have to keep overcoming. That to me seems like a probationary period. That is also true because when Jesus comes again, he comes with the reward to give everyone according to the works that they have done. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. So everyone will be receiving the due reward of what they have done when they were still living upon the face of the earth. But the question still stands, if a person is saved, is there any possibility of him falling away and being lost? Now, look at what Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 13, it specifically talks about a righteous being able to be lost. It clearly states that the righteous can be lost. It says, when I say unto the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he had committed, he shall die for it. Now here the Bible calls a person righteous. How is a person called righteous? He has accepted Jesus and believed in him at one stage. But after he believed in Christ and he was declared righteous, he trusted in his own righteousness again and lost his salvation. How? By committing iniquity. So is there any possibility of a righteous person to be lost again? To become an unrighteous person? The answer is yes. Now whenever we come to the question, Am I doing the good works to be saved? The answer should always be no. We are not doing the good works to be saved, but the good works that we do are a result that we are saved. It's not to achieve salvation. But always remember, we are saved by grace alone through Jesus Christ, but we are judged by works and rewarded according to our works. So that is to say that when you are saved, you have to remain saved. And to remain saved, you have to be in Christ. Then you are as saved as you were from the first time you believed. If not, you will lose your salvation. Even Paul knew this when he was talking to the believers in Corinthians. 
in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 it says but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself be a castaway he was saying that after ministering and preaching to a lot of people he himself was liable of being lost that's why he was keeping his body under subjection so that he can remain safe in Christ Jesus why was Paul saying that because he knew that there was a possibility of him losing his salvation he did not want anyone to take away his crown in revelation chapter 3 verse 11 the bible says be old i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown who is that man the devil devil might take away our crown to gain the reward that God has for us in heaven what do we have to do to hold fast and as long as we hold fast we have a crown of life waiting for us so what am i saying here once you accept jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you are saved completely saved not half saved not three quarters saved you are completely saved from the moment you accept jesus christ but you have to stay safe remain safe The works that you do does not save you again but it testifies that you remain in Christ and have everlasting life. And truly when you are converted and accept Jesus Christ into your life, you can never commit sin. You see, 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 says, "Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remain in him and he cannot sin, because he is born of God." It is when we leave God that we commit sin. All God requires of us is to submit ourselves fully to him and he should gain full control of us and guide our will so that as long as we remain subjected to him he will help us and give us victory so that we can remain safe until he appears in his kingdom to reward those who have remained faithful to him. James chapter 4 verse 7 tells us submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you. This submission is daily. It's not just a one-time thing and then next day you forget about it and the next day you pray about it again. It has to be constant. And remember, even our own righteousness that we achieve should not be our work, but it should be Christ living his righteous life in us. And as long as we are in him, we are saved perfectly. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior into our life, we are saved as perfectly saved but we have to remain saved in Christ and after we are saved we have to remain saved and to remain saved requires remaining in Christ and Christ living his righteous life in us and we have to constantly remain in Christ like that as a branch is connected to the vine in John chapter 15 verse 5 it says i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit and without me ye can do nothing and verse 6 it says and if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch that is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned as long as we remain in Christ we are saved i pray that we remain saved in him if you haven't accepted jesus into your life as yet i pray that you accept jesus into your life from now on And those who have already accepted Jesus Christ, if you have already accepted Jesus into your life, I pray that you remain safe in him. And as long as you remain safe in him, he will keep you from falling into temptation and make you prepared to live with him throughout eternity in the land that he is preparing for you when he comes the second time. May God bless you.